your question that you hold all of your questions until the end because I think we'll be answering most of them somewhere along the line in this presentation. So welcome. Uh, this information session is for the Diagnostic Medical Sonography Program. Um, what we'd like to what I'd like to start with is just giving you a little bit um, about the program, about who to contact for what, uh, just to make it a little bit easier for you through the process. So the Diagnostic Medical Sonography Program is located on Broward College North Campus only. And we're located at 1000 Coconut Creek Boulevard in the Health Science Building, which is Building 41 in Coconut Creek, Florida. We are right off of the Turnpike and Coconut Creek exit. So it's very easy. We're the very first building that you see as you enter the campus off of Coconut Creek, right there at the light closest to the turnpike. Um, we have a website, uh, www.broward.edu backslash ultrasound, or just go to the Broward uh, website and type in ultrasound or sonography and the program information will come up. Um, and also please note that all uh, sonography courses and labs are only on uh, North Campus. Clinical sites can be anywhere within South Palm Beach County and all of Broward County. So um, sometimes you may have to travel a little bit far for, the, uh, for your clinical sites. Uh, my name is Karen Hoban. I am the program manager for this program. I have been the program manager for the um, past 15 years. Uh, we also have a clinical coordinator that assists me in uh, doing clinical placements for the program. So I can be contacted best at email khoban at broward.edu. So if you have any questions or concerns after this session, then you can always um, email me. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. So um, here we go. So here's some other important contact information. Now I can give you information about the program, but if you needed uh, information about admissions, you would need to speak to the admissions officer, Sophie Spuyan, and her email address is s-p-u-b-i-e-n at broward.edu. Her phone number is 954-201-2892. And again, it's probably best to send an email. Um, that way we can share the information in writing and you might have a clearer understanding. And it's really the easiest way to get a hold of us in case we are in meetings or in class um, um, or just not available at the time. If you have questions about your transcripts, the courses that you're bringing in, what you need to, what courses you need to take to get into the program, uh, what courses you might have taken at an outside college and you want to know if they're going to be accepted, um, then you would need to speak to the health science advisor, and that is Jenny Rainey, and her number is 954-201-2884. Uh, and her email is jrainey, R-A-I-N-E-Y, at Brower.edu. And that's probably the best way to contact her also, because she's not always in her office. She's sometimes on different campuses. So um, the best way to contact any of us truly is by email, and we try to answer as quickly as we can. This is want to change. There we go. So what exactly is diagnostic medical sonography? Now, I know everyone thinks that it's all about OB and looking at babies all day long, but really we do a lot more than just that. So diagnostic ultrasound itself is um, a modality in the imaging department that utilizes high frequency sound to produce an image. So we're looking inside of the body producing an image. We use a probe, which we call a transducer, that's placed on the body. But first, we apply a gel. It's a coupling gel um, on the skin 
and then we um, use our probe over that. Um, so the sonographer would manipulate the probe in order to transmit sound to the different locations in the body so that we can receive reflections back to that transducer and create an image. Um, and then the image appears on our, on our screen. And then the images are also saved digitally so that a radiologist can review them later. So a diagnostic medical sonographer themselves is an individual who provides patient care services using ultrasound and related diagnostic procedures. You must be educationally prepared and clinically competent as a prerequisite to professional practice. So <clears throat> for professional practice, you have to have proof that you did attend um, a, a formal education in sonography and that you attended clinic and that you're clinically competent. So <clears throat> this is what would happen at the end of the program. I would contact the uh, licensure organization and um, notify them that you are educationally prepared and clinically competent, and then you will be able to sit for your uh, licensure examinations. Sonographers also demonstrate and maintain competency through certification by a nationally recognized sonography credentialing organization, which is the standard of practice. And you have to maintain certification in all areas of practice that is endorsed. So you need to do continuing education credits um, each year in order to maintain your registry, which is what we call that in sonography, which is like your licensure. Um, a sonographer functions as a delegated agent of the physician and does not practice independently. So we are practicing under um, the uh, direction of a physician. We are not physicians ourselves. We do not make diagnoses. Uh, we are also committed to enhance patient care and continuous quality improvement, and that will increase knowledge and technical competence. And we use independent professional and ethical judgment and critical thinking to safely perform a diagnostic sonographic uh, procedure. Because with ultrasound, sometimes we are uh, uh, have to make decisions on our own. So we have to critically think to think, what is the best for this patient? What images do I need to take? Do I need to take additional images? Do I need to speak to a radiologist because this case is a little more complicated than a normal case. Um, so sonographers do all of that. And if you could please check the chat, um, Ms. Rainey, the health science advisor posted her new phone number. So I apologize that I did not have that number down. So sonographers provide images of areas inside a patient's body and those images allow physicians to interpret important medical information and then make a diagnosis if there is disease or there is not disease. Uh, there is no ionizing radiation associated with diagnostic ultrasound, uh, we use sound energy only. So um, there's no uh, worry about biological effects, although there is the possibility if you use it incorrectly but current data indicates that the way that we use ultrasound currently at the frequencies that we use, um, that it benefits the patient. So um, the risks are outweighed if there's any risks at all. So we've been using ultrasound for quite a long time without any, ind any indication that there is a risk. So ultrasound, um, we can look with ultrasound a few different ways. So first, our first image here, this is grayscale ultrasound. This is the way we look at the majority of our images. So it displays anatomy and pathology in shades of gray from black to bright white. So here's black, this is fluid, bright white, this is bone. This is actually an image of a fetus in utero. Um, we also can use 3D ultrasound which adds texture and shading effects to represent a 3D image. Uh, here we see it's called a surface rendering. In this imaging, we're seeing a fetal face right here. 
We have an arm and some fingers. We see an ear over here, eyes, nose, mouth. Um, and then again, in order to see with 3D, it's all based on how well that, that uh, fetus is positioned. If they're not in a good position, we may not see their face at all. But we use 3D also for a lot of gynecological procedures um, in order to see the uterus better, uh, not just, not just um, for fetal imaging. We use color flow Doppler. Uh, color flow Doppler shows us the pattern of blood flow within an organ. In this case, we're looking at a kidney here. This is the kidney, and this is the blood flow into the kidney and throughout the entire uh, kidney parenchyma. So we can demonstrate flow or lack of flow um, that helps in the diagnosis of the disease process. Then along with color, we can use spectral Doppler. There's exams that we do, uh, vascular exams in the legs, arms, uh, the neck, the head, uh, that uh, the waveforms and the velocities of that blood flow is gonna be an indicator as to whether there is disease or there is no disease. So it's a very important tool when you're doing vascular. So we have a wide range of applications with ultrasound or sonography. We look at the organs in the abdomen, the liver, kidney, spleen, pancreas, uh, OB and gynecology. So we can look at a fetus, we look at the ovaries, the uterus, um, echocardiography, we look at cardiac. So we look at the heart, which is part of this uh, program. So in this program, the um, uh, main modalities or uh, areas that are taught is abdomen, OBGYN, echo, which is cardiac, and then small parts. You learn a little bit of breast, a little bit of vascular, a little bit of neuro and musculoskeletal, interventional and intraoperative, although um, our main focus is abdomen, OBGYN, echo, which is cardiac and small parts. Um, and once you complete the program, you are able to sit for the registries related here. So you can sit for the abdominal registry, which small parts is included in that. You can sit for the OBGYN registry and for the cardiac. We are one of the only schools that I know of in South Florida that in one two-year program um, have uh, offer abdomen, OBGYN, and cardiac. So um, it is an accelerated program, meaning that we are teaching in a two-year period three uh, areas of concentration versus two. Most other programs only offer two, either cardiac and uh, vascular or abdomen and OBGYN. So that is one of the advantages of attending the sonography program at Broward College, but you have to remember it is an accelerated program, so it's going to take all of your time every minute of the day and your energy to um, complete this program. It is a very difficult program. So here again are some more images. Here's some ultrasound images of the abdomen. We're looking here at a liver and we have color on because we're looking at the hepatic veins in the liver. And here we're looking at a liver that has multiple metastasis. So all of these are cancerous masses in uh, the liver. Small parts, that includes um, testicular, breast, thyroid. Here we're looking at a thyroid image. Here we're looking at both lobes of the thyroid and the trachea is right here. Um, and here we're just looking at one lobe and the carotid artery is here, trachea is here. So we look at more than just OB cases and studies. We also do OB and, and gynecolo gynecology. And with gynecology, we're speaking about the uterus and the ovaries and anything that's in the pelvis. Um, and here is an image of a uterus that they're measuring. Uh, we have simulators. Here we have a simulator for OB. Because we don't have OB patients in our labs, you will have OB patients in the clinics but we do have simulators that we can use to uh, practice scanning OB patients. We also perform what's called a transvaginal 
sonography in the clinics on patients, uh, not in the lab. We do have a simulator for that also. Uh, but with transvaginal sonography, we also take a look at the uterus and the ovaries, and we can look at very early pregnancies. Here's a very early twin pregnancy. We have two fetuses here. And here is a transvaginal image of a uterus. Uh, here's a fibroid. We can see the endometrium very clearly. So uh, we can look at almost every internal organ uh, in the human body. Here's an image of cardiac, which is echocardiography. So we're looking at a patient's heart. Here we're evaluating the walls of the heart and we see that we have normal wall thickness for this patient. And here we see a patient that has very thick walls. So this would help in the diagnosis uh, for this patient. Um, another uh, another uh, procedure that we assist with would be a transesophageal echo, which is called a TEE for short. And that's where a cardiologist will place a tube down the patient's throat. And at the base of the tube is an ultrasound crystals. It's actually an ultrasound probe. And we can image the heart right from behind it. So we eliminate the lungs because we can't see through air very well. So the air of the lungs uh, is often uh, difficult for us to see through. And so we just choose a different way. If we have to see the heart um, for some reason that we could not get a good echocardiogram on them, then they would go to a transesophageal. But again, the cardiologist uh, takes the images or positions the probe and then uh, the sonographer works the equipment. And then of course we uh, do vascular. We look at the arteries and veins of your legs, your arms, your neck, and then um, the vessels in your head. And we do other vascular. We can look at the vessels in your liver. We can look at the umbilical cord. So we look at a lot of uh, vessels throughout the body. So sonographers use state-of-the-art equipment and that is to ensure high quality diagnostic information. In this area at our clinics, they have uh, very state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, most of them lease, so they keep uh, new leases every couple of years so that their equipment is very up-to-date. We have a lot of different varieties of equipment in our lab so that you, um, you have the opportunity to scan on a variety of different uh, machinery. So what is the job description and the requirements of a diagnostic medical sonographer? Well, the essential functions would be to obtain, review, and uh, integrate pertinent patient history, supporting clinical data, to facilitate an optimum diagnostic result. So sometimes it's not just the images that are um, giving you the diagnosis. You need to know a little bit more of the patient history, other exams that they had in order to assist the radiologist in making the diagnosis. Uh, they perform appropriate procedures and records anatomic, pathologic, or physiologic data for interpretation by a physician, usually a radiologist, but it can also be an OBGYN or a cardiologist. We record, analyze, and process diagnostic data and other pertinent observations that were made during the procedure for presentation to the interpreting physician. So aside from just taking the images, we pay attention to how the patient is feeling, if they've had any type of medical uh, reaction or they're in a lot of pain, um, anything that they tell us about their history, all of that is recorded on, um, on a sheet for every exam. And um, it is uh, related to the, to the physician who's reading the study. Um, exercises discretion and judgment in the performance of sonographic or related diagnostic tests. So sometimes we do have to make a judgment call um, so you do have to exercise discretion and judgment. Uh, demonstrates appropriate communication skills with the patients and colleagues. So you need to be able to communicate well 
with your patient and with your coworkers or any other colleagues in the hospital, because we all work together in order to help our patients, in order to get a good diagnosis and to, um, to help see that that patient uh, feels better. Always sonographers must act in a professional and ethical manner. Uh, we must facilitate communication and education to elicit patient cooperation, understanding of the expectations and response to questions regarding the sonographic exam. So we don't just tell our patient, okay, lay down on the stretcher and then go. We need to speak to our patient, explain the exam to our patient, answer any questions that they may have regarding the, the exam itself, and then perform the exam. After the exam, we do not give any diagnoses. Uh, we just tell our patients that your study will be read by the interpreting physician and your doctor will get the results and your doctor will give you the results. Uh, physical requirements, you need the strength sufficient to lift, turn, or position some patients. Uh, push an ultrasound machine, which is on wheels. It can weigh up to 300 pounds or more, um, but it's not an issue. They make them pretty aerodynamic. And you must be able to move patients in wheelchairs and stretchers because that is part of our job. We may have to go get the patient from the room, bring them down to the department. Uh, you need the ability to maintain prolonged arm positions and wrist flexure necessary for scanning. Uh, sometimes we're scanning for 30 minutes. Sometimes we're scanning for 10 minutes. Sometimes we're scanning for an hour. So you need to be able to, uh, to do that. Uh, possess manual dexterity that's adequate to manipulate and operate all sonography equipment. You must have that dexterity because we are scanning with one hand while you're scanning with one hand, you're using your other hand to work the machine. So to save images, to change settings, to do whatever's necessary to get the best uh, image. And you must possess visual skills that are necessary to adequately differentiate between sh subtle shades of gray and make color distinctions. So it's very important that we can see these subtle changes in grayscale so that you can determine if there's a mass there or not. And then of course, we use color Doppler all the time. So you need to be able to distinguish what, what's the color in that area because the change in color is what is gonna indicate where the disease process might be. Um, you need the desire to provide respectful, compassionate and consistently excellent patient care. We need to treat every patient as if it was a loved one. We need, you need extensive knowledge of anatomy and physiology. We actually need uh, knowledge of gross anatomy because we are looking at all of the organs, the vessels that feed the organs, the muscles that surround the organs and the bony structures. So you really need extensive anatomy and pathology. Uh, good hand eye coordination and spatial orientation. Uh, comp comprehensive knowledge of ultrasound physics and instrumentation. You'll have two terms of ultrasound physics so that you have a complete understanding of the physics of ultrasound so that um, you know what you're doing, the changes you're making on your machine or what changes you might need to make. And you need to be detail oriented in your work ethic because we, uh, you're going to have to fill out a sheet again, an impression of what uh, happened during the exam, what you might think your impression of is what this patient's uh, diagnosis is or could be, and then all of the measurements and anything else that's pertinent to that particular exam of that patient. So what are the qualifications to become a sonographer? Well, you have to graduate from a formal diagnostic medical sonography program or cardiovascular technology program that is accredited by the Commission on Accreditation for Allied Health Education Programs, which is KHEP. And uh, the program at Broward College is accredited by KHEP through the Joint Review Committee on Education and Diagnostic Medical Sonography. So this means that an accredited program, students can sit for their um, 
registry or licensure exams 60 days before they graduate from the program so that when they graduate, they are uh, ready to be hired. Uh, it also means that the program um, allows itself to be reviewed by the Accreditation Commission to make sure that we're teaching according to the educational guidelines of the state and of the accrediting body, uh, and that um, all of our students are getting the appropriate education that they need to be a qualified diagnostic medical sonographer. When you complete this program, you will be able to pass all of your registry exams because we go through this formal process and make sure that we're covering every aspect of sonography and every piece of anatomy that you need to know. Um, our licensure or registry is through the American Registry for Diagnostic Medical Sonography, the ARDMS. And again, through them, you'll take a physics registry uh, the summer of your first year in the school, in the program, I should say. Um, and then you will sit for your abdomen, OBGYN, and cardiac registry. Um, again, abdomen and OBGYN, you'll be able to sit for 60 days before graduation, and your cardiac you can sit for right after graduation. And then each year, you need to complete 10 continuing, continuing education credits um, so that every three years, you'll have the 30 CMEs that you need. And it's a rolling triennium, which means that every three years, if you add them up consecutively, you have 30 credits. So it's best to get 10 a year and then you don't have to worry about anything. So a registered diagnostic medical sonographer, our DMS is the credential that you will hold after you pass your registries. And then it'll be which specialties. So abdomen, if you take the abdomen registry, OBGYN, when you take that, you can also take musculoskeletal, pediatrics, and breast, uh, but that would be after completion of the program um, that you could take that on your own. Uh, and then you will also uh, be able to become a registered diagnostic cardiac sonographer, which is RDCS is the credential. Um, and the specialties offered there are adult, pediatric, and fetal echocardiography. But with this program, you will uh, be able to sit for the adult cardiography uh, registry. And then um, many of the facilities in our area, once you're hired, they give you six months to a year to sit for and pass your RVT, which is Registered Vascular Technologist. So that's another registry that you'll probably be getting. But once you've gotten the other three, you'll be able to just um, study for the vascular uh, exam and sit and take it because you'll have a, knowledge, a lot of knowledge already that you'll need for that exam. So where can sonographers work? They can work in outpatients, the clinics, hospitals, uh, private physician offices, you could work at a research facility, or you could become an independent contractor where you go to different um, physician offices that you set up uh, um, a contract with these physician offices and you come there with a machine and you scan their patients. Uh, you could also become an app applications or a sales specialist for any of the equipment manufacturers, Philips, GE, MindRay, um, Sonosim, um, there's a whole care stream. There is tons of, of different manufacturers of ultrasound equipment. Or you can become, after you have some experience, an educator or a consultant. The employment outlook is very, very good for this profession. It always has been, even when um, people were losing jobs, uh, sonography, the medical field, it seems to always stay open. People are always getting sick. They always need workers. Right now with COVID, it has even increased the availability of positions that are available in the sonography area. Um, but according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the diagnostic medical sonography profession 
is expected to grow 14% between 2020 and 2030. Um, and I think it's right now, every facility has openings for sonographers. Um, and this percentage is much faster than the average for all occupations. So we're always looking for sonographers. As an ultrasound technology evolves, it's gonna become an even more common method used in assisting in diagnosing medical conditions. So um, instead of going invasively, we'd rather look from the outside. So that's why it's always going to be a growing profession and it's always changing. So it's never stagnant. Um, so the salaries are very competitive. Um, so according to the Bureau of Labor, Labor Statistics as of 2020, they don't have the 2021 salary out there yet. Uh, the median salary is um, $70,380 a year. And of course, that depends on experience and it depends on what area of the country you're located in. One thing I didn't mention is that once you pass your registry exams, um, then you can work anywhere in the world because the ARDMS registry is accepted everywhere in the world. So you don't have to retake any exams if you move out of state. You don't have to take any exams if you move out of the country. It is recognized everywhere. So now the big part, what are the actual program requirements for admission into the Diagnostic Medical Sonography Program? So in order to apply for the program, and all of these courses need to be completed before you can apply to the program. So they must be graded. So you can't apply to the program and then, or while you're taking one of these courses, they have to all be completed. So you need to take an applied physics, so just a general physics course. Radiographic phys physics is accepted if you uh, have taken it as part of a radiography program. You need college algebra, uh, English composition, speech. You need anatomy and physiology one and two with the lab. You need a general uh, humanities course and then all graduates of any uh, Florida college must have uh, civics. And there are two civics courses you could choose from. That is the history of the United States since 1877 or national government. So you must have those one of those two courses in order to graduate. That started this fall. So that started in August. It is a state requirement for all colleges in Florida. So if you have every other course and you've already taken a social science, you doesn't matter, you have to have history of the United States since 1877 or national government. And then you're awarded points for all of these classes based on your final grade in the course, whether it's an A, B, or C. Additional points then are awarded uh, depending on the highest degree that you have. Uh, radiography students earn the highest points. And then your overall GPA, um, you'll be awarded points according to what category you fall into. You must have a GPA of 2.5 or higher in order to be considered for this program. Um, so what are the admission requirements? Uh, once all prerequisite courses are completed and graded, you can apply to the program between November 1st and March 15th of each year. That is our window. Once March 15th comes, the window is going to close on the 16th. So you have from November 1st to March 15th. It does not matter if you apply on November 1st or if you apply on March 14th. That gives you no advantage. What's going to give you an advantage is what are your grades in your general education courses? That's going to be key. All students must have a minimum GPA of 2.5 to be eligible for admissions. And admissions, again, is based on a point qualification system that I explained earlier. There is no waiting list. You're either offered a seat 
or offered a seat as an alternate, or you're not accepted into the program and you would have to reapply for the next year. Once you are accepted into the program, you will need a physical examination um, and immunizations that are required, including all vaccinations. So you need your MMR, hepatitis B, all of that um, needs to be completed or when you get your physical exam, they'll run your titers for that. All students, there is no exception to this, must be vaccinated for COVID-19 and you must have both doses before classes begin. Our classes begin every June at the end of June. So you would have to have both doses before the first day of class or you cannot start the program. Uh, the hospitals are requiring it. It is not a college requirement. So if you don't have this, we can't send you to clinic. If we can't send you to clinic, we cannot accept you into the program. Uh, students will also be um, uh, asked to complete certifications such as CPR, and then you'll take some mini modules for TB and OSHA and um, some other areas, domestic violence, different areas that um, you need to have a certification in. Um, and, that, and that we give you as part of your, one of your first courses in the program. Uh, CPR, you do have to get from an outside agency. Uh, you'll have a background track, check and a drug screening, which also will be required before you can start the program. But all of this will be explained once you're accepted into the program. But we just want you to know what's, what you can expect. So um, our sonography courses begin every June, somewhere near the end of June. Um, and the first two classes you take are six week courses, which end in August. And then you'll start the full time part of the program. So um, sonography courses run about 34 hours a week that you are spent in class and clinic. This does not include any of your study time. And, and that's another part about this being an accelerated program is that there is a lot of time we go over a lot of information each class. We actually give you the notes printed out because we're moving so fast through the information. Um, so you really have to devote all of your time to this program for two years if you want to be successful. Anyone who thinks that they can just not study, things come to them easily, you're not gonna make it in this program. If you decide, to apply for the program, you have to understand that the program is tough. It's a lot of studying. Your free time is go going to be spent studying. You're already going to class full time, basically. So, um, and, and clinics could be on a weekend, they might be at night, or they might be on a weekday. So we have a variety of, of different hours and different days of the week that you will be assigned. You do not click, pick your clinic site. You do not pick the clinic day that you're going. We pick all of that for you. It's based on, um, on what exams you need, what help you need, where we think you are uh, scanning wise. So um, again, you might have to drive far and you don't pick your clinic site. We pick what's best for you. Uh, the DMS associate in science degree will be awarded upon completion of the two-year course of study. So you will have an AS degree and graduates are eligible to sit for their ARDMS registries. Again, physics you take in your first year and then your second year abdomen OBGYN and adult cardiac. So here is a list of the courses. This is all of the prerequisite courses listed out. And then this is our course sequence of what courses you're taking each term. Um, and they have to be taken in their term. This is a mandatory course sequence. It can't be changed. And in order to go move from one term to the other term, you have to pass all of the courses with a C or better in the previous term. Otherwise you will not move forward. 
Uh, tuition and fees, our tuition is very, very low. Um, it is basically for the two-year program is around $14,088.80. So that's for the entire two years. You pay per term based on how many credit hours you are taking that term. So if you look here, if you add up these credit hours, that's what you're going to be paying each term. So it's according to your credit hours. And of course we have uh, student loans, we have financial aid, um, all of that available also. Uh, books and supplies are subject to change. Um, so you will have to uh, buy textbooks for the program. You'll buy textbooks in the summer, you'll buy textbooks in the fall, and then you won't have to buy textbooks again till the following year. So um, we do use the same textbooks uh, throughout the program for the first year. And then for the second year, the books you buy in the fall are used for both terms. The program is also, um, let's say that all of the tests that you will take uh, throughout the program of your first year are all cumulative. So what you learn in the summer, you will be tested on in May. So um, you need to remember all of the information. So it's not, you're, you're only being asked questions of what you learned this term. You're gonna be asked questions, what did you learn last term? What did you learn this term? Maybe what did you learn for the past three terms? Um, so it is cumulative because your exams are cumulative. For cardiography, it'll be cumulative for those two years. We don't mix the general with the cardiography. Um, so why should you choose uh, the Broward College Sonography Program? Well, we have a 90 to 95% pass rate on the ARDMS registry exams. Um, and 95% of our, our students are successful passing the registries and are working in the field. And when you go to clinic, you'll see that the majority of uh, the, the sonographers you work with are Broward College graduates. Um, also, instructors have over 45 years of combined ultrasound experience. We have small class sizes. We only accept 20 students per year, low tuition rate. Um, BC has graduated excellent sonographers in our community for over 30 years, which now I believe it's, it's let's see, I think we're almost at 40 years. We have state-of-the-art uh, equipment in our lab. We have simulators. Uh, we have extensive clinical training at Broward's finest hospitals and clinics and some of Palm Beach's uh, clinics also. Uh, you can always go to our website for more information. You can always email me for more information about the program itself. Um, about anything else, you have to um, email either the admissions person or the health science advisor. Um, so Ms. Rainey uh, posted her phone number and I'll go back to admissions. Um, will medical terminology count? Someone is asking in the, in the chat. Will it count for what? Um, can you can you add, can you help me out with? what medical terminology. As far as the physical exam, it's a physical exam from the um, from your doctor where they listen to your heart and they do all of that. It's not a strength exam, it's a medical physical exam. They'll draw your blood, they'll run your titers from your blood. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, medical terminology is not counted in the points to the program. What medical terminology will help you with is if you can understand the medical terms, it'll be easier to understand what you're learning in the program. So the, the um, civics is absolutely required and that's new, but medical terminology will indeed help you greatly but it is not, does not go toward the points to the program. It is recommended that all students take it because then you will understand a lot more of what we're talking about 
quicker, easier. Um, any other questions? Hi, Ms. Karen, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. I just wanna clarify something um, on the program. I know you said the program is two years. Um, yes. When it comes to the clinicals, um, because I work also, so I just wanna make sure I'm on the right path. Um, so when it comes to the clinicals, are it, is it like during the whole two year or is it like end of the, the course or what is it? During the whole two years. You will go to clinic three days a week. In mm -hmm. the summer, you will be in clinic four days a week. Okay. So in essence, five days a week, you're going to be in either class or clinic. Which days it's going to be, I can't tell you. I can only tell you in your first year, you will be in the summer. Your six-week course is um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and that's eight hours a day. Starting in the fall of that year, you will be in class on Tuesdays and Thursdays all day, and then you'll be in clinic three days a week, eight hours for eight hours each day. Okay, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I also have a question. Yes. Um, you mentioned in the beginning, this is something that I was a little bit confused about. The radiology, well, the radiography program, you have to take that in order to qualify to take the, I believe it's RTE 2385 or the beginner, beginning radiology class. Yes, or if, you're not, if you're not in the radiography program, that doesn't apply to you. Okay, so that's why I couldn't find it. Okay, so I, yes, I'm only yes. allowed to take the physics first. You have to, you can okay. only take general physics. Okay, that's fine. I also have another question. Um, you mentioned the two doses for the vaccine, but I have, well, what if I took the Johnson & Johnson, which only required the one dose, what would I do in that case, or am I okay? No, you're okay. Oh, you're okay, all right, fine. because it's the Johnson & Johnson. I, yeah. I had another question with the vaccine as well. Um, does it have to be, like, up to date? Because I haven't taken um, the vaccine, and it's been, like, a couple of years already. You only you only need it you only need to take the COVID vaccine once. So okay. if you took it in it, 2020, it's fine. Okay. Now the hospitals right now require that everyone get the flu shot every year. That's a requirement also from the hospitals. Whether they start saying that everyone has to get the um, they're going to come up with an annual COVID shot too. They may combine the flu and the COVID together, um, but we have to wait to see what the hospitals say when that comes out. So as of right now, whenever you got your two COVID vaccines, that's good, whatever year it was, that's good for now. If they want you to have a uh, vaccine each year as a booster, that, that will come later, which probably by the time your class starts, we'll know if that's gonna be a requirement like the flu shot each year. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, can I get points for my CNA license? Uh, no, not for your CNA license. Uh, what is the acceptance rate? Well, we accept 20 students each year. We accept about 20 alternates and um, we see what happens because even though we accept 20 students, not everyone takes the seat. Um, some take it and then decide that they can't do it, they can't handle it. So then we would put an alternate in their place. Each year you can only apply to the program once. We don't have job placement assistance, but because you go to clinics, um, it's basically an inter for interview for you when you're at clinic and you can decide if you like that, that facility and you want to work there. They decide if, if you fit because our clinics know that when you complete school that you're not going to have a lot of experience. So they understand and they can train you. But if your personality fits, that's kind of what's more important, that they see your work ethic, that you're a hard worker. Um, that you always jump in and do what you have to do 
and you're always trying, then you know they will offer you a job. So most of the time, uh, students um, will take sit for the registry. Once they do, they let you. Uh, they let their wherever they want to work. They let them know. They bring them the resume, and um, the clinics, you know, basically hire them that way. Uh, you cannot work without the license or the registry. No, no, you have to have that in order to work in South Florida. It's basically a requirement for insurance. The average, I would say the average starting salary is probably somewhere between 50 and $70,000 as a, as a new sonographer. It could be higher depending on how the, um, how the uh, openings go. So, uh, but that's, that's it right, right about now. Any other questions? When you are in the program, will you graduate with an associate or just sort No, you graduate with an associate degree in sonography. There is no certification anymore. It was, it's all degree. And in those two years, you will only be taking sonography courses, no other courses. And you go through the summers. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? You can ask. Uh, yes, I have another question. Like, I know there's, is there a certain amount of credits you have to take? Like, is it more than four or something like that? For, for what? Um, like, for example, like for FAFSA, you'd have to, you have to take um, 12 credits. Is it the same thing for the DMS program that you'd have to take like a certain amount of credits per semester? The, yes, the credits, the credits you have to take per semester are according to the program, to our program map here. So each term you have, um, whoops, sorry. Let me share this again. Make sure I'm still recording. Um, so these are the courses that you have to take. And you will have to take these courses in each of these terms. So in term six, you're taking four courses. But here in term three, you're going to be taking six courses. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Well, if, um, wait, let me see if we have any more. Uh, Prerequisite classes need to be completed before the application period is over. No, before the application period is over. So it's not before the program starts. They have to be completed by May 15th with a grade in order for you to be able to apply. And that would be applying on the very last day. So could you apply on November if you're taking the, like you take the prerequisite courses, but they're not finished? No, no. They have to be finished. Okay. Every prerequisite course has to be finished. Um, Yes, the, the website, they haven't changed it yet from psych to, um, to uh, this civics, but they will be changing it shortly. So psych is not required, physics is. Um, the application period ends in, um, on March 15th, and then it usually takes four to six weeks for admissions to process all the applications, add up all the points, and determine who 
are the 20 that are going to be accepted into the program. So that would put you at about the end of April that you would find out if you're accepted into the program. So I would say it's, it's, it's four to six weeks. Uh, some of your uh, prerequisites can transfer if you have an AS degree already. Um, absolutely. It just depends. So if, if it's an accredited school, then yes. Yes, the application period is November 1st to March 15th, correct. Anything else? I have a question. Yes. I don't know if I'm hearing you right. Um, you're saying that physics, like P-H-Y-S, or civics, now a requirement. Physics has always been a requirement. General physics, P-H-Y-1001. Okay. So, okay. I thought I was hearing civics. Sorry. I just want to clarify that. Civics and physics. Both. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Both. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anything else? All right, well, thank you everyone. Thank you for attending. Again, if you have any questions, just reach out by email and have a great day.